welcome back to the Breaking Bad Insider Podcast. My name is Kelly Dixon. Um, we're here to talk about episode number 305, which is called Moss. I'm um, here with my executive producer, Vince Gilligan. Hello, everybody. How y'all doing? Uh, the writer of this episode, Moira Wally Beckett. I am not going to get in trouble this you said, year. You said that perfectly. <laughs> Thank you. Actress Betsy Brandt, who's here visiting us, uh, who plays Marie on the show. Hi, Betsy says hello, <laughs> everyone. And, uh, and the editor who cut this episode, uh, Skip McDonald. Hey, everybody. Hey, Skip. Good to, good to see Skip on here. Thank you. Uh, we're working on these episodes right now um, in the editing room. Uh, you know, just, I guess, as Vince likes to say, a peek behind the curtain. We are not finished. Yeah. Uh, we are finished shooting all this, uh, the shows, but we are not finished editing the shows. And Skip and, uh, Skip and my room, we share a common wall. And I must say that I feel very familiar with part of this episode because I have heard the song that is playing for the last two months. Um, and I know you guys uh, just uh, recently finished uh, locking the picture for this episode. Yes. Um, and so I'm really, really familiar with the strip club scene. So I figure you might as well start in and talk about that. <laughs> but what, what I, what I got to say, too, is um, is if you also could talk about the fact that I think this is one of the first times, I mean, definitely is the first time that we've flashed back to, like, the pilot, you know, and what actually happened in, from when when Walt gave Jesse the money in the pilot, which is kind of a little deviation from what we usually do. We've never, is this correct, uh, Mario? We've never yeah. shown a flashback to the actual pilot. We've done flashbacks before. Yeah. But never to the actual pilot. Yeah. And we actually use footage any, from the pilot. In any um, season. But you actually had to go, Skip, you actually had to go back and you, you recut some of that footage from the yeah. pilot. Because I worked on the pilot and I'm like, that's not how it went down. No, it was rearranged from what it was written in the pilot. So we had to go through and pull some dailies and recut it. And it was a challenge to make things flow <laughs> because they were in different positions than they were in the script. You did a really good job cutting it. Because you, you, you've, re, you've changed up, and, and the way you wrote it, too, is very nice. You changed Thank around you. Uh, some of the, the wording uh -huh. that was in the pilot and... It's been a while, but nonetheless, when I saw the cut for the first time, I didn't even realize how much you had changed it around mm -hmm. because it still has the flow that I remember in my head watching the pilot and directing it. Uh, you, you, you changed both of you in the writing stage and the editing stage. You changed a lot of it around, and it flows very well. Nicely done. Yeah, it was, it was nice that it worked so well because I was concerned of their positions by the car and yeah. passing the money out that it wouldn't come together the way. There's one cut in there that is, uh, it works every time I watch it, and yet, strictly speaking, strictly, you know, textbook speaking, it's it's his, Walt's body position is a little over here, and then suddenly it's here, and it was the only choice she had as an editor, because the footage was never intended to go together that way in the first place, but it just, it worked, that cut, that particular cut works for me every time, because you, you just, you know where to, this guy's good, as are you, <laughs> we got the two best editors in uh, TV. You know, and we, get, uh, we get the good footage to work with. I shouldn't even say TV. That sounds pejorative. Yeah. The two best editors. <laughs> TV movies is all the same nowadays, or it should be considered all the same because it's the same, you know, it's the same wonderful craftspeople doing both now, and, and hopefully even more so in the future, interchanging yeah. between the TV and the movie Dude, world. this is art. <laughs> Editing is Art. We'll talk about that some. You got two editors. <laughs> we got two editors together uh, for uh, on a rare no, occasion. I mean, yeah. you know, like yeah. Jesse says in the pilot, cooking is nah, art. I, I know what you're saying, but I mean, let's talk about it. You got you guys together here. Nah, they don't want to hear from us. Well, tell them how late you were here last night, oh, editing oh, episode oh, seven. We, we were here. I left here at two o'clock this morning. <laughs> you left here at two o'clock this morning. Two o'clock this morning. I'm it glad I've, I've hit the links by four thirty every afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> that would be unpleasant. That sounds right. Damn. Unpleasant. Yeah. But you know what? Why don't you talk a little bit about uh, about the strip club? I, and I only refer to it because obviously it's it's the teaser of this scene, which is really really cool. And we brought back uh, one of our favorite directors, uh, brought him all the way back from across uh, across the globe, Sweden. Uh, the director is Johan Rank. Um, but Second uh, time you've worked yeah, yeah. Johan. Yeah. But uh, but um, the reason that I'm saying that is because uh, you're having to deal with a very very sticky situation as we as we speak about this episode. Um, with uh, it's over now, with, but yes, we did with yes. AMC and and with you know our I guess standards and practices because you guys decided to to write an episode in a strip club. I don't know what they have against pasties, but 
there's a phobia there. <laughs> there's, there's the, the pink ones especially. Yeah. That was the phobia. Right? <laughs> yeah. It was Johan wore the pasties at a certain point. He had yeah, listen, the we don't zebra know one. How often he wears <laughs> we should have had some footage of him to carry I, I have, you know, I have, a, I have a photograph that I'm planning on making a lot of money with. Far more <laughs> yeah, on. But uh, what, what is the deal, if you can explain a little bit about um, the tough part about that scene? You know, it's, it's a really, really fun scene, but yet there are still issues with it. Moira wrote a great episode, and, and the episode opens up in a strip club and flashback, as you've said. AMC is actually pretty good to us. They let us get away with a lot. But it's sort of the American thing now. It's, it's easier on network. On CBS, you can watch close-ups on autopsies. You can watch... I was watching some show on, on network, just some awful, uh, I mean, it was well shot, interesting sequence of a guy murdering an entire family with a tire iron. It was on one of those uh, shows. And it's amazing the violence you can get away with yeah. on, t- on TV in this country. Uh, but, boy, you show just a glimpse of a breast or something like that, and everyone just <gasps> the alarm bells start going, <gasps> aruga, aruga. <laughs> <laughs> amazing. So uh, we had more trouble. On this episode, standards and practices wise, than we've ever had uh, in the history of the show, mm-hmm. and really? and and they let and to be fair, it's, and they're not villains, they're not bad guys. It's just it's just the state of things that you can get away with murder, figuratively, you know, literally, no pun intended. You can get away with any kind of violence, any kind of murder, but God forbid you show some naked uh, flesh. <laughs> Our two producers, uh, Michelle and Melissa, here had to do quite a bit of. Uh, <laughs> Quite a bit of jockeying uh, uh, with, uh, well, talk, uh, you got to speak up, but talk, talk uh, about a little about that. You guys had to deal with a lot of, you had to go back and forth with AMC, with the network, and talk about how, how you know, how the pasties were on the breast, how big they were, all we that kind of thing. We got very specific in, in, not about your breasts. We got very, <laughs> we got very specific in prep. Uh, about what we were allowed to shoot, what we weren't allowed to shoot, so that we didn't shoot anything that couldn't ultimately be on camera. Uh, so we were very specific on, on what the girls had to be wearing, such as the pasties could not show, had to cover the nipple completely. They did not want any um, grinding, so to speak, any no, uh, sexual uh, sexual grinding. And um, oh yeah, the girls covered up, showed up in a bunch of tattoos. We had to get the tattoos cleared. They're That's wonderful. That's a copyright issue. That's a copyright issue. Really, what you guys? Yeah. Tattoo right. is a copyright um, issue. Yeah. What you should ask though. Yeah. You should ask Moira about the casting of this and and her um, special help in casting this episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Talk about the shooting of it and all that and the casting. Well, um, I got a lap dance. I'm just gonna come right out and say it. <laughs> we were auditioning strippers then. And they, you know, very nicely sort of got up during daylight hours and came into the casting session. And Johan was there, and Michelle was there, and... Did you all get lap dances? Well, no, we just, we needed proof of ability, and (laughs) Johan wouldn't do it. That makes no sense to me. That makes no sense to me, Johan wouldn't do it. I don't know why. Because Johan's one of the craziest Swedes, uh, uh, craziest guys ever. And he's a rock band guy. guy. He's a rock star guy. He's a free European, you know. But um, yeah. I think he, I think he thought maybe it would be inappropriate because he was a man. Because he's usually and so interested in what's. <laughs> <laughs> so it was just like, all right. We love you, I do. I, I want to get him back uh, it was again a good next season. <laughs> she was really. Uh, I thought she was good. At. Uh, did, did you only she get just this nice. one? Cause <laughs> <laughs> well, that's important. Because how could you compare? Hair. How could you compare? <laughs> I, I can't uh, that's a whole other that. story. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I got a question. I mean, and you know, can if you guys can talk about this? Um, um, <laughs> obviously, I bet I, this is just. A, I'm just thinking that probably this happened. Is is our actors had a very very good time with this scene? You know, Aaron could barely remember his lines. That's okay. unusual. That's unusual. But, but, but the other, the other question, in, the other question I have, if you can also go into this part, is how long did this scene take? Because I, I did not cut this episode, so I really don't have any idea what kind of, you know, what it took to shoot this or whatever. Years, no, it took yeah. all day. But if you, if you so, guys, oh, it was just one day. It was just a whole one day. day. One day. In okay. a real strip club. In a real strip club Called, with uh, real all, strippers. But you've got, you've Called got. all fours. Yes. You've got basically these three classy. young guys and you brought back Rodney Rush, you know, yeah. who plays Combo, who, was you know, to, to do nice. this. So you've got these three guys that, and basically you've turned them loose in the strip club. 
So, <laughs> you know, with, did with you think, may, did you did you come in on time? Let's put it that way. Did you come in on we time? We that day off, surprisingly. No, but so of. what was it like, you know, with getting, you said Aaron didn't, couldn't remember his lines. What was it like? Was it was it easy to wrangle these guys or very, very difficult? Everybody was very respectful. You know, it's like the crew was quite excited because yeah. it was a, it's such a departure for us and, you know, we're going to the strip club on Monday! You know what time? Everybody <laughs> was really excited. And then they got there and it was just... Just no, but intended another day of it was grinding work. it out. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I remember in the pilot, you know, Brian being in his underpants for days on end out in that those cook sequences. And the weird thing is, it must be, I've never been to a nudist camp or whatever they call them. It must all be the city. And or, or I've been to strip clubs, and not that often, you know. But uh, I've been to a couple, and it's weird <laughs> after, yeah, you get in your you After, after about 30 like minutes, you're just like. 10 minutes or 30 minutes, you're just like. Breasts. <laughs> so skip a little bit about cutting that episode. Um, you know, you've got this song that I know you guys are working on. I don't know if because you, you guys cleared the, we did. You cleared the song. Yeah. Yeah. It must have done been done the last two days though, because I've been hearing a lot about it. And can you talk a little scientist. bit about the song. The song. Tell us a little bit about it. Well, it was a song from uh, Johan Yo- 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 Friends, I believe, or the That's Teddy right. Bears is the band, and they gave him the rights to use the song or signed off the rights to the show. But then, with all the clearances through Sony and everything, it became difficult. And so, so Drac, which is the the Canadian version of, and I don't know how Canada got involved with this, but the Canadian version of ASCAP, which you is know those Canadians got their fingers in every pie. <laughs> 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 they're, they're, they're taking too? over. Ah, they're taking over. <laughs> So where the hell this happened? I know, it's and Ann Murray's in the room. I don't think they're hockey stick. <laughs> you're from the uh, you're from the lovely town of Vancouver, which you currently is hosting the Winter Olympics as the we speak. Winter Olympics. <laughs> they're doing their best. They're trucking in snow still. Yeah. That's tough. So. That's a global warming, mm-hmm. I guess. But uh, the Teddy Bears, a great song. Yeah. Great. Uh, Johan Rink, our wonderful director, uh, who, as I was saying earlier, Moira, you worked with him last year last on, year. Uh, on uh, the 205. 205, so the same number episode this year. Yeah. Oh, I'm uh, really lucky. And, and Johan used to be a rock star in Sweden. He used to front a band called Staka Bo. Staka Bo. Which means okay. Stockholm you can, Boy. You yeah. Can, uh, yeah, you can check him out on, on YouTube. Uh, you His do. music yeah. videos are still there. He's good. Yeah. I mean, he's he's a good musician and he's a good uh, singer and he's got a great eye. He's, we're he's so lucky to have him as a director. Great yeah. and, and his buddies, uh, the Teddy Bears, uh, you know, we got this great song, which as many times as we had to go through that sequence first and your wonderful editing of it, <clears throat> making it flow together into a nice music montage, and then secondly, having to go through it a, a, a slew of times since then to try to cut every objectionable bit of breast so that yeah. we could put it on television. Yeah, that was a challenge, and, and keeping it working with the music, too. Yeah. And we, we finally got it to work, and yeah. uh, we're, we're hoping that music was clear because it would be tough to find another song oh, God. to fit. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. But, but as, uh, the, this is a credit to the song that I never... I got sick of the process. I never got sick of hearing the song over and over again. Right. And that is. Yeah, I, I got to say that to too because I I do like hearing the song. It's a catchy tune. You could dance yeah, to it. It sticks and in your head. Shocked <laughs> to that song too. So I mean, I have heard that song. Oh, that's right. Uh, Ad nauseum, and well, you, I still dig it. Interesting thing to speak about with the editing. Uh, speak about that. How when you say we shot to the song, tell them what yeah, that means. Yeah, we actually got to use the song and playback uh, in the strip club. And so it was playing the whole time that we were shooting. And whenever we wanted to energize everybody, and because, you know, it's, you're not, it's, the strip club is not active. We were just there shooting. We took it over for the day. Whenever we wanted to energize it and make it seem like it was really happening, we would hit the playback, and that song would come on, and it would set the tone and get everybody going again, and then we actually get to use it. In the episode, it's not just a placeholder. So, in other words, mm. the actors themselves are hearing, uh, hearing it and moving to it versus, actual song. versus a music video where the music is added in later and the editor. So, speak. Maybe you guys should speak to that. How different is it to cut a scene when, when the playback, when the actors are actually moving to the playback? How much harder is it to cut to music when no one was hearing the music you are now putting in? Yeah, because if you have a different tempo from what they were shooting to, it's a whole different thing. It's it's a little harder to make it flow smoothly yeah. because their movements and stuff are at a different beat to the music. So it's a pleasure when you get the song that they shot to to yeah. use with the cut. Yeah, because mm-hmm. it all cuts together 
because they've all been moving to that beat and to the music, so you kind of have a nice flow to it all. But you have a theory. You said the other day about 4-4 four, four time that people well, live in it. I think I think that's why 4 I mean, you know, this is total layman. I have no idea. I've never spoken to a musician or anybody, you know, music theory about it, but I've just seen it happen so much, and I'm sure Skip can also attest to this, that, you know, rarely, this is a rare treat that we actually get to uh, use music that has been decided upon beforehand. We're usually cutting to something totally different than what actually gets used. Um, and I have seen so much music get changed and the picture not get changed. And what's nice is when you throw the music, any music onto a, a cut of something else that never had that music on it, the cuts tend to fall on beats. Uh, our composer Dave Porter uh, said that he thought all editors must be great musicians because they could make that happen. And I said, I don't think so. I think that some kind of rhythm internally that you have tends to be in 4-4 four, four time because this happens way too often to be an accident. I don't know what, yeah. what you're... No, that, I mean, it was like when we did 105. We had that montage where we went through a variations of songs, but they all worked. Mm -hmm. without changing the picture. So there, there is some validity to it. But I've got a, yet another theory, and not to take away from anything you guys do and your profession does, because I've learned so much on this show about editing and how about how it makes or breaks, and in our case, makes episodes. But i got another theory, not to take away from you guys, but <laughs> I have a theory that the human brain makes those connections automatically anyway. So it's the same reason why you can put on Dark Side of the Moon and, and put it against The Wizard of Oz and everyone says it's a perfect match and it weird and it eerie like uh, the sound, it's a perfect soundtrack for The Wizard of Oz or whatever. Hmm. It's not. It's just that uh, it's just the human brain makes these connections. So so if unless something is really way, way off the beat, your brain is kind of saying, yeah, the music goes to the image. The image goes to the music. No, no, no. I'm not not to take away from all the work you guys put in to fine tune it and make it that much better, <laughs> but it's like your you, the human brain is looking for those connections. That's my theory. Actually, I want to get a I want to go on record right now. I want to get a guy. I went to NYU with a guy named Jim White. We got to get. Yay, his. Jim White. We've Jim been trying. White. Jim White. We've, we've been, been trying. trying. We've been it's trying since the pilot. You know. And <laughs> not, uh, not trying in a legal way. Trying in, as in finding the right moment for one of his songs. He's absolutely. a real. Anyone who hadn't tuned okay. in to Jim White, oh, this guy's great. You. He's a real talent. Absolutely. Uh, but but you know what it is. You can put a song in, and it could be eighty percent of the, the way there, or ninety percent. But it's what you guys do. Getting it. It sounds like not much, but it's it's the fundamental difference. Getting getting anything good from good to great it's all happens in the last six or seven last four or five percent yeah. and it sounds like well you only got to do four percent of the work no that's yeah. where like a hundred percent of the work <laughs> takes place getting at that last little bit shaving those frames you know well, this is you know you guys know watching this uh what you're watching is 24 individual photographs a second you're watching 24 frames a second and what you guys do we'll sit there in the room and you guys will you know the beat, the rhythm. So much of it's about rhythm. Yes. The rhythm is not quite there. Let's knock two frames off, which is one twelfth of a second, which is like you know I, I don't even know how fast it is, but but it can, it, you can notice it. It's surprising how much of a difference it does make. Yeah. I mean, the two frames, like you said, a twelfth of a second. Yeah. Isn't a lot, but it makes a big difference in the pacing of it. Yeah, it totally scene. makes a difference. I mean, I remember last or oh, no, the first season when. Uh, we had uh, we we had a piece of music in in one of those meth making montages with Badger, and um, and then you came in and you wanted to choose this whole other piece of music, which was quite exciting because I never thought that you would like it. I liked it, but I didn't. I just didn't think that you would like it, and you changed it to that song. Uh, remember, uh, duh, duh, uh. Which Thomas uh, Golubich found for us. Exactly, yeah, yeah. those were friends of his, uh, Fuji and Miyagi. Yeah. And um, and I remember you saying, oh, just put it up against it, and that's what we did. And you're like, see, it works, it works. And I'm like, yeah, it works, but you know what? Let me spend an hour with it. Just let me spend an hour with it. And it, it. worked a hell of a lot and, better. Yeah, it's, yeah. Like, it's, like, yeah, yeah. it's like, wait a minute, I can use all those all those different cool things that the music does to enhance the picture. And, and I think that's a lot of times what we like to do. You know, we can throw um, a sound up against a picture, and it can work. Most of the time, it will fall on the beat. But then, you know, we're like, hey, wait, oh, wait, this, let me use this one piece that I've been wanting to use for a while. We can, we can accent it yeah. in certain ways. Yeah. Well, let's talk more about the script. You did a great job on this, as Thank always. You. What uh, What else happens in this episode? 
uh, we, we, you know what we we discover? Well, Walt basically makes a big decision to yes. go ahead and start cooking, uh, cooking for what well, we're well, working for. Uh, Gus, working why does he Gus. do this? <laughs> no, I mean, uh, you, know. you know what? Can we can we uh, just because we didn't get a chance to talk about it um, in three hundred four? So can we just touch on the fact that Walt is now not teaching school anymore? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. So, that was a fun yeah. scene we didn't yeah, talk about. Yeah, we forgot. Before. I totally forgot it's, to talk about that. It's so much that. fun stuff to talk about. We, yeah, we, we you know. But, uh, but yeah, so he, he basically put the moves on Carmen, and uh, and he's on a sabbatical, so right? Sad. Sabbatical. He's on sabbatical, unintended for him. Sabbatical. What did he say? It's a it's a sabbatical. Uh, you know, it's like a yeah, it's open-ended a, or something. Yeah, it's kind of kind of indefinite. He, he, he yeah. was invited yeah. to take some time off. Was invited. <laughs> was invited was to take some time off. Okay. Yeah. Some time. That was a great scene in three hundred four. But now, really what are you yeah. doing? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> but now, doing? now he is uh, he he's basically taking uh, other employment. Yes, and why is he taking that? Because money can't be that big an issue. Why? Why do we think he's doing this? Well, a lot of it has to do with the um, with his coming around to believe that his marriage is over. And Gus makes a very persuasive argument that he needs to he must always provide for his family. And he's also a prideful man. And if he doesn't keep cooking his formula and it makes him feel like a man, then Jesse's going to do it and oh, yeah, because he'll he, be emasculated and uh, divorced. Yeah, because so. he got mad at Jesse last episode. This is my formula. Mine, mine, mine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's very <laughs> proprietary about wow. it. Well, and when we see him at the store and he knows these guys are going to cook, he's like, that, that's the wrong thing to use. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just, he can't oh, yeah. help himself. Yeah, He's, yeah. He can't Which help happened himself. in Memorial's episode last year. That's right. Yeah, right, right. One of her episodes last year. Yeah. 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 That's true. But it's true. He's, he, this guy, he's been cuckolded by his wife. He's sort of been, uh, and by the way, uh, this, this right here is a good thing to talk about. Is she right or wrong for doing this? Uh, I think she's, I, 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 there's, there's not a lot of right in Ooh, Breaking Bad. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, I'm on her side. Uh, yeah, it's okay. pretty good. We're not. She's not a villain. It probably a lot of folks watching this be all oh, hell no. She's, you know, she's messing with the, our protagonist, the guy we love. But what choice did he leave her? Uh, what do you in, mean for kicking him out of the house? You mean? Yeah, she. You know, she doesn't want a meth dealer living in her house. It's shocking what he's done. I mean, he's, so it's yeah. kind of tragic. He did what he did. I think at least initially, and maybe still ongoing for a lot of good reasons. But mm-hmm, yeah. But why didn't he take the money from Gretchen and Elliot? And why didn't he? You know, and so yeah, Vince. Then, why didn't he take the money from Gretchen and Elliot? I don't know. <laughs> what happened there, man? No, I'm just kidding. But well, these are no. The, indeed, these are questions I want the audience to be asking. I think we all want the audience to be asking. Yeah. And then it's like uh, he he moves in back into the house very much against her wishes. He dares her yeah. to, <laughs> to go the to police. the police, call the police. <laughs> he dares her. And it's an easy dare for him to make because at that point he doesn't give a damn. It's like, you know, I'll play chicken with you. I'll drive into the oncoming headlights. I don't care anymore. She's not going to play. She's not going to win at a game of chicken with him. The only thing she's got left to do is to break bad. Yeah, and go off, and this is a man she actually cares for anyway, uh, Ted. Mm-hmm. So, the hell with it. I think that's really well said. You know, this is the moment for Skyler, where he backs her into such a, a corner that it's you know, it's fight or flight, and she makes a decision to sleep with Ted, and she says to herself in this episode, you know, I, even though I know what I'm doing is wrong. Um, I'm, I'm probably doing it because I'm trying to get Walt to leave me. And it's mm. the only time in my day when I don't feel like I'm drowning. That's a nice scene. Good yeah. job on that. Great, really well played, too, by uh, Anna she Gunn did a and, job. And, and Julie Dretz and uh, Sam Catlin's uh, well, wife. Yeah. Does a great job in that scene. So it's complicated, you know? It's hard to say what's, what's right and wrong in that situation because it's all wrong to a certain degree. Everything that Walt's doing, <coughs> Skyler's choices, but. Yeah, Walt's completely tilted at the pinball it. table here. He's yeah. a screwed up. I mean, and, you know, and we love Walt. I hope we do. I hope you keep watching because because you love Walt and you and you, yeah. even if you don't love everything he does, you're intrigued by what he's doing. But sometimes uh, you do the, and sometimes I think about this when I'm acting. Because sometimes if you just go through a scene and do the opposite of what you, and do the opposite of what you think you would do, you will f- often times find 
something in that that is right. What do you mean? Like, even a, like you um, an I'm going to give you a situation and say, do the opposite. Do yeah. whatever you think you, you would, however you think you would play this, let's run through it once where you do the opposite okay. of whatever your gut tells you to do. Right. And a lot of times you'll find something in that that might be what you would do. Oh, that's cool. You know, like we, we think we know how we're going to be in a situation, but until you're in that situation, you don't know. Yeah. You don't know. I mean, if, you know, I don't know. I, if my husband did what, what Walt was doing, I don't, I, I, I don't, I mean, who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Like, you, you can't say, no, I would do this, I wouldn't do that, I would definitely go to the place where, you don't know. Yeah. You don't and then know. refused I mean, to leave the house afterward right. and play chicken with you. I dare you to call the and cops. I, and I love that he does that. Yeah, he's yeah. like, no, I'm, no. <laughs> and he's not being a bastard. I mean, I think he is being very unsavory and not thinking of the family like he should be. But she he's can not, see it as not respectful, yeah, but in but that not, situation, yeah. I feel like his heart is in, the, yeah. he's like, really, he loves her. And he loves he's the desperate. family. He's and he desperate. Thinks, and he thinks and he the loves worst her. thing that could happen is for the family to dissolve. Yeah. Of course he's not. In my opinion, not thinking straight, he no. should get the hell out of there. Well, has he really been thinking straight? No. I mean, we've seen moments of it, but to me, it's like the rare moment of lucidity. The, the, yeah. Yeah, well, he's smart. He's clever. He's, he's very smart. It doesn't mean he's always right. rational. You know, yeah. I mean, I don't know that he's accepted, and he may never accept that. Yeah. He's he's not going to live to see baby Holly graduate from high school. Yeah. You know, it's really not likely. Yeah, no, it's true. You know, so much of this show is, is about rationalization. We yeah. ra and it's just something that fascinates me endlessly, how humans are capable of rationalizing any kind of behavior. Right. People, humans are able to adapt to just about any kind of living environment yep. within certain parameters of temperature and air pressure and whatever. People can live in the hottest climates or the coldest climates on Earth. They can adapt to all kinds of physical differences. They can also adapt to all kinds of different ideas. You could, unfortunately, I hate to say it, find a way to live in Nazi Germany in some weird way. Uh, you, not like you'd ever buy well, into it. Many people but, did. But many people did. It's <laughs> so that you can find ways to buy into, not or buy, not buy into, but but persevere and 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 uh, somehow adapt to, you know. All the people who made it through and Cambodia even, and in the seventies under Pol Pot. Even blame oh, it yeah. to somebody else too. You, you, there's how do you uh, how do you go on living when things are so awful? But uh, I'm jumping. I'm going way out on a tangent here. But also, you can if you yourself are Breaking Bad, you yourself are doing some making some terrible life choices. You yourself are uh, you know I'm suddenly a criminal. But wait, I can't be a criminal. Even if I continue being a criminal, I can't be a criminal. Therefore, I can't define, myself, I can't as define myself as a criminal. Therefore, I have to see my life and my lifestyle and my life choices now as as ones uh, of, of noble. A her, a hero, a heroic, noble, yeah. heroic nature of I'm doing this for my family. But then when the family starts to dis dissolve because of the choices I've been making, I got to do come hell or high water, I got to pull it back together again. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, it's anyway, we have fun coming up with this stuff. The worst part about it is the, the tough deadlines. Some days we wish we had more time to talk through stuff, but most days. But we, uh, <laughs> yeah. But you know what? You also, I just wanted to get because Betsy is here. I wanted to get to that scene that uh, that <laughs> I wanted to get to that scene that um, that uh, you guys have in the bathroom where your marriage is not really the way that we used to be seeing your marriage. That's you know, a great I, scene. I always thought that, I love that you know, scene. that they were they they were so in love and they everything scene. is going great, but you guys are having some issues too. Yeah, cuz he's still you know. communicating and you know, I think <laughs> we see that Hank can be a man of few words, and I think there's something about um you know, the, the, this got to be a big part of that that Marie likes and feels comfortable with. Well, I was her to do much of the time. She has a lot of words herself. So it's normal between the two of them. But also, I think in that scene, the biggest thing that really struck me as we were working on it is that I was at a loss. What do you say? You know? Yeah. And that especially if he's not willing, if he's only willing to admit so much, then there's only... Somebody like you, you can't argue with somebody who agrees with you. It's the same thing, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. You were a real jerk. Yeah, I was. I was. I was a jerk. Yeah. And, yeah. You know. Yeah. I mean, and it, it's the, there's there's really nowhere for them to go because yeah. he's just. And he's so defensive. He's like, you know, 
I, I'm on the big things here. You know, everyone's telling me, uh, you know, go to El Paso, but I'm on the big things here. No one, you know, he's so defensive. He's such yeah. a such a raw nerve. And I think too, he it, doesn't want you to know. He doesn't want me to know that um, he's afraid. Right? What's really right. going on? Yeah. He doesn't want me yeah. to know. But I, I have to think, and I I felt like, you know, even when we were shooting this, that there's some that you can see that. He has to, there's some part of him has to know she knows even before he knows oh, yeah. or is it willing to admit it even though he's just not going to go there at all, you know. I, I think it, it says a lot about how they care for each other and how they struggle. That's one of the nicest moments, by the way. It's such a wonderful job by you and by Dean. Uh, and I always kid, every time Dean's here and some of these other podcasts, he's such a fun guy to goof around with. But he's actually a very sensitive actor, yeah. as are you. As I mean, you guys are so fun together and fun in general, but you guys are so, you're playing on a very deep and high level there. I love that shot, and I love the shot that shot Johan got, where it's, uh, you knock on the bathroom door and you walk in, and we hold in that wide shot for mm-hmm. the longest time, and you're like, uh, and, and you say, yeah. Uh, Catch the bad guy? Catch the bad guy? Yeah, and great dialogue by you. Catch the bad guy? Do you want some breakfast? Do you want... Yeah. And it's so not about anything, and yet it's about everything. Right. It's really... I love that. It's a great I shot. That. I love Great scene. Thank you for that. Like, when we were doing <laughs> yeah. it, I was like, I mean, I know we got to get this and go on, but I was like, I could do this all day in different yeah. colors yeah. and different... <laughs> play with this, play with that. It was just a pleasure to, to work on. Was Dean really naked? I wasn't there. Was he I really? Think he was naked. naked emotionally. He was. Um, he both yeah. were naked emotionally. Um, was he was, wearing some kind of? Yeah, I don't. I mean, sometimes we were, we some actors careful. do some of their best work naked, whether it's a shower scene or just a scene in the kitchen. You know, I maybe <laughs> Dean Morris is one of those actors. I don't know. Um, sometimes in interviews, even after season one, and I didn't know about that one. I'm like, he's such a sensitive man. <laughs> so a lot of times it's really just about not upsetting Dean. And he will cry at the drop of a hat. Man. He will. He goes, ah, and he starts banging at the punch guys to hold him down. You know, I was going to mention, scene, I, I wanted to mention also, um, in, uh, we need to wrap it up here soon, but I wanted to mention, I, I remember f- the first time I saw the uh, the new Super Lab, basically, underneath the, uh, the oh, watcher. Oh, that's this episode, right? Oh, yes. Yeah. That is oh, hell, we're going to talk about this. And I was, I was going to mention, I was going to mention, I was going to mention about the fact that, you know, when, when we, f- when I, when we first saw it, um, I know it wasn't my episode, but we, you know, we get the dailies and we see it, and I remember my assistant Mel was saying, wow, where did they find that place? I'm like, they built that. They built He's that like, you place. think they built that? Hell yeah, they built that. Yeah. <laughs> I like that Bill says, you think? Yeah. Do you think they built that? <laughs> you know what? No. They that, did an incredible job. Oh, it looks great. It's it, amazing. It is fantastic. That's our super lab. That's what we call it. Although yeah. I don't think anyone ever calls it the super lab on camera, but that's no. what we, how we that's refer it to it. in the script. And that is a and combination. It is super. It, it is super. super. <laughs> it is that. It is a two-story set. Uh, designed by Mark Freeborn, our wonderful production designer, and uh, and built by W. Gilpin, our amazing construction coordinator, and both their very, and both their wonderful crews. They work night and day on that they work thing. Night and day yeah. on that thing, yeah. and it is made. It is. It is. And it just happened. I swear to God, yeah. it was just. The stage was empty. For and then there was yeah. this. And then there was this, and it was just. Yeah. It's, Huge and, and it's, amazing, and I love it. It's it's built to look like it's made of board form concrete, which is what you do. You take you take uh, plywood, um, you take boards, and you nail them up, and you pour concrete as a mold, and that's why you know that board form concrete looks it's like rough. it's got the it's got rough oh, yeah. rough edges. Looks like it's but that's just a wonderful, very thin veneer plaster job done by. Uh, and why did why did they want it to look like concrete? Well, I, I so wanted to have a, I wanted stuff, to have a right? bunker like feeling. So I, I'd ask yeah. for I'd ask for something bunker like, and Mark Freeborn came up with that design. Huh. But that's just it's all made out of plywood and lanau yeah. and if I'm using that all the just various uh, it's. But it's, and yet it has to also be built. I mean, that the catwalk is steel, the spiral staircase is steel. They had to fabricate all of that stuff, and it has to be built to certain building and safety codes. And it's just, uh, it's amazing. That is an amazing set. And and all, most of the walls, you can pull pieces out of them, put camera cranes mm-hmm. up, or you mm-hmm. pull the wall out here, there, and all looks like, it's a, it looks like, uh, you know, a very well built uh, concrete bunker. My Did baby. a great job. Mike Mike, Mike, Dave, Mike Daigle, our wonderful uh, our wonderful uh, painter, uh, oh. 
Uh, yeah. Great guy and his crew uh, plastered it, painted it, made it look. It it just, it's a we real group effort. We have such a talent, a bunch of people. Yeah. Maybe I'll have a party there. Maybe yeah. Marie will have a neighborhood party there. Anything is possible. <laughs> the show is <laughs> crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe so. Yeah. All right. It. Well, I, I want to thank everybody for coming in today and talking about 305. 305. 305. Moss. Why was, what is, Moss. Why is it called Moss, by the way? Because 301 was no Moss, his answer to Gus. And 305, his answer to Gus is yes. Is Moss. I just Before, even love that word. Ergo Moss. And uh, join us next week when we're talking about episode three. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I get confused. When we're talking about episode three. That's oh, my name. I'm we're right, talking about man. episode three oh six, which is called Sunset. I actually, that I, I heard that that's Sunset. We all, all gonna like that one. That's Sunset. A good one. Uh, uh, stuff so this one again was called Moss. It was directed by Johann Rink and uh, written by Moira Wally Beckett. Hey. Um, thanks everybody, and let's go break bad.